Hi, I'm Kay Choi. Welcome back to my channel. In case you missed it, I got engaged to my boyfriend, now fiance, back in December. If you didn't know that, then you probably either need to watch this video here or follow me on Instagram, and then you would have known the news. I know that everyone's relationship looks different, but for us, we started talking about getting engaged a couple of years before it actually happened, and we were also one of those couples who went ring shopping together so that I could pick out and ultimately design exactly what I wanted. So in this video, I want to share five steps to picking out an engagement ring because it can honestly be a pretty daunting process. Before getting into those steps, I just want to give a quick overview of my engagement ring, which is right here. So my ring is a custom ring from Veil vale Jewelry, which is a small family-owned business based in New York City, and I found out about them through Instagram and actually through a friend who showed me their Instagram. I actually had a chance to interview Eva and Ava, who are sisters and the owners of Veil vale Jewelry, interviewed them over the phone, and so I'll be inserting bits and pieces of their advice and knowledge about engagement rings throughout this video. They were also kind enough to give us a discount on my wedding band, so not the engagement ring that I'm wearing right now, but the wedding band, so just want to give them a huge thank you for that as well. In terms of the ring, starting with the stone, it's a 0.71 carat rose cut diamond. For the band, it's two millimeters wide in a half dome shape, so it feels a little bit more comfortable than like a flat shape, for example and it's an 18 karat yellow gold. So overall, I think it's a very simple but subtly unique ring, which is why I chose it. Now that we've done an overview of my specific ring, let's get into the five steps to picking out an engagement ring. Step number one is to browse a bunch of different styles. This, I think, is one of the most fun but also most overwhelming parts of the process, and what I did was I just looked at different rings, mostly on Instagram, literally looking up hashtag engagement rings, just to see what styles are out there. I also looked at different friends and family members' rings when I had the chance, just because rings tend to look a little bit different in person, so it's good to see photos as well as rings in person if you're able to. And as you explore, just start to save or pin the rings and styles that you like, and you'll slowly start to notice which elements are speaking to you the most. That leads into step number two, which is to narrow down your preferences. As I was looking at the wide variety of ring styles out there, I slowly started to take a mental note of the aspects that I liked the most. I was mostly focused on the stone since that is kind of like the main part of a traditional engagement ring, and so there are round stones, oval, fancy. There's also the general style of the ring and the way that the stone is set, so it could be a bit more modern and classic and simple, or it could be more antique and intricate. There's also the color of the stone, so typically you would see a white or colorless diamond, but there are also champagne-colored diamonds or yellow diamonds or even non-diamond gemstones that come in a variety of colors. So at this stage, for me, I started to have my heart set on a pear cut or marquee shaped stone, and so I was just looking at and saving a bunch of rings that had that shape of stone, but this leads into step three, which is trying on the styles in person. This step is really important because, again, rings can look really, really different in person versus in photos, and they can also just look different on different people. And sort of the way you approached it is what we would really recommend, you know, kind of like doing some research, looking at images. It's really important to know what you like because, as you said, you know, you were focused on like the marquee and maybe a pear shape. But as you were trying things, things on, going to the next step of actually going to stores and like learning about brands, you know, understanding sort of their vision, but also aligning them with yours, you know, you, you find out slowly what really looks good on you. So I went to a few different places in New York and in LA, tried on a bunch of styles, and when you try them on, make sure to not only take photos, but also take video. Because again, just seeing stones in person, it's different, and seeing them move, seeing how they interact with the light, it's important to capture that so you can remember just how it looks in real life. Because that's really how you're going to be looking at your ring every day. You're going to be looking at it in person and not in a photo. I think like physically having it on your hand is possible. Even if you just go to like, you know, any local store to try on shapes and like sizes, and have like a general idea of what you like. The really most important part is knowing what you love, you know? And that takes sometimes just like trying on a lot of stuff and, and sort of zeroing in on what can you imagine yourself with every single day? You know, that you look at it and you're still like, oh, this makes me so happy, you know? You love like, you know, it just gives you like good feels, you know? The ring that really changed my mind in terms of the type of stone that I wanted was this one, which was actually the ring that I thought I would like the least when I picked it out as an option that I wanted to try on during 
my appointment. The one thing that didn't change in terms of my preferences was wanting a rose cut diamond. So the difference between a rose cut diamond and a brilliant cut diamond is that in a brilliant cut diamond, you can see that the bottom is pointed and a lot of the weight lives in that bottom portion of the diamond. And this just affects the way that the light refracts through the stone. The proportions of how that stone is cut requires a lot of different measurements. What they're doing is they're cutting the stone in order to refract as much light as possible. So the light's bouncing through that big facet on the top of the table, going all the way to the tippy tip of the diamond, that little point, and then bouncing back out. So what you're seeing, all that sparkle, is all the light plate that's happening inside the belly of the diamond coming back out. A rose cut diamond, on the other hand, is flat on the bottom, meaning the weight is a bit more evenly distributed, which is why my ring, which is only 0.71 of a carat, looks a lot bigger than it is because the weight is distributed. The way that a rose cut diamond is cut gives it a bit more of a subtle sparkle, which I just really was drawn to. It kind of reminded me of glass or a water droplet, and I just loved how subtle it was. So that particular appointment was my most successful one because that gave me the basis to then go into step four, which is to customize your ring. This might not apply to everybody because some people might find a ring that is already made and works perfectly for them. Maybe it just needs to be resized. But for me, I saw this one ring that I loved but I wanted to make some modifications to it to make it perfect for me. This is where the jeweler can help you think through all of the different things that you need to customize your ring from the way that it's set to the shape of the band, to the color of the band, to the material of the band. If the ring is set at a low profile or a high profile, there are so many different things, but honestly, you don't really need to know all of that going into a ring appointment or even going into the customization process because your jeweler will really lead you through everything. Having done this, for so many years, we find that outside of all of the like the technical like uh, kind of subjects to kind of really master before committing to a stone, the most important thing is how does it feel when it's on you? You know, like if do you do you have that flutter? Like do you respond to it? You know, like most people who like you know know like what that feeling's like. It, you know, they, they can, it's more easy to choose the stone. The last step that I have here is to pick your stone. So you've gone through the process of customizing your ring, picking out all the different elements that you want from the band to the way the stone is set and all of that. But the thing that really makes an engagement ring unique, at least a traditional engagement ring, is the stone. So I went in person to their studio to look at a few different stones that they had sourced and kind of laid them on my finger, laid them on like the mold that they had made of my designed ring so that I could just get an idea of how the stone itself looks because stones are kind of like snowflakes, like every one of them is slightly different. And even if you have two stones that have very similar characteristics on paper from the carat weight to the color and all of that, they can still look really different in person. I feel like a lot of people focus so much on the four C's and when they start the engagement ring process, they're trying to learn and figure out what the four C's are. But I really feel like that's the last thing that you need to worry about because it's really first about getting an idea and understanding the style of ring that you want. And then when you're finally ready to get that style made, then you can go ahead and pick out the specific stone. So the four C's is carrot, color, clarity, and cut. Within a certain budget, you have to be able to kind of adjust those four factors um, to kind of be really happy with the stone that you get. So if I go down a little bit on the carrot weight, then I can put more of that budget towards getting a better color or getting a better clarity. But if one goes up, the other has to go down. If you keep the budget the same, like uh, something has to change. So it's essentially finding like the right like levels of each that you can be happy with uh, that will fit within your budget. I think it's helpful to learn about the four C's and just understand what they are so you can be educated and equipped when you do get to that step of the process. But if you're in the beginning of the process, I wouldn't worry too much about it. And I would also just really let your jeweler help educate you and teach you about all those things because that's what they're there for. That's it for this video. I know it's a little bit different than the content that I normally share on my channel, but I love just sharing knowledge and information that I've learned and gained with all of you. So if you're also picking out your own engagement ring or maybe you're trying to pick out an engagement ring for someone else, I hope that there was something in this video that could be helpful to you 
you through that process. Again, thank you so much to Veil Jewelry for helping me design my engagement ring. Be sure to go follow them on Instagram because their rings and jewelry are just so beautiful. I just kind of scroll through their page and admire all of their items. So be sure to check them out. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you want other engagement slash wedding related content or specific questions and I'd be happy to share and I will see you in the next one. Bye.